Welcome back to this week's Friday summary of the week. As you may be well aware, uh, anything that comes out on YouTube is a bit delayed unless you're doing live uh, broadcast. It's all a time warp. So today is Thursday. This video will be up on Friday, clearly. Uh, it's a very warm day. And uh, Chagyong used to go down to the Office of Education. So we're gonna go for a little trip. It's a really warm day today. Uh, I just sat in the car and I opened the door and this heat wave just hit me. Uh, it just happened this morning. It was pretty warm overnight. I woke up in the middle of the night. Our heater was on for some strange reason. And I was just sweating bullets, buckets. The inside of the car is pretty steamy. I'm wearing a leather jacket today, which is probably not the best choice. Okay, we're gonna head down to the uh, Office of Education and then uh, I'll show you the building. The main government building in the city that was taking care of like passports and all kinds of governmental bureaucracy stuff has moved uh, uh, into the outskirts of the city. And now they've got a massive building with a huge parking spot and pretty cool. That's the education building. And this is the parking spot right there. So all along the streets, there's like absolutely no parking anywhere. Uh, you wanna know how much the Korean government spends on education here? Well, barely enough to afford a space for the Office of Education to have a decent parking spot for people to come and park. That's how much. <laughs> I assume that the parking is mostly filled with employees' cars. So if there's anybody else coming in here with some business to attend to, they're, I don't know, they're stuck having to fend for themselves and try to find some parking, hopefully not to infringe on any other uh, reserved parking spots and not to get a ticket while they're doing it. This week, to summarize, uh, what's been happening? I don't know, not a lot really. We had a Q&A on Wednesday, I met Lyle on the same day, uh, which was Tuesday actually, before probably publishing the video on Wednesday. And today is Thursday, and tomorrow is Friday. And that's good, because I'm looking forward to the weekend. This week hasn't been moving so fast, not as fast as the weeks usually do. Which is good and bad, I guess. I shouldn't be complaining. It's a beautiful day today, so that's nice. Even with the heat, the air seems to be clean for the time being, at least. I don't know. I assume that uh, later on in the day, quality is going to get worse. Actually, talking to Richard a couple of days ago, uh, he told me he re read a study uh, produced by the Osan National Institute of Science and Technology, one of the top unis here in South Korea, apparently. And they do a lot of research. Uh, in the sciences clearly, but they, about a year ago he said uh, they published a paper that uh, looked at the pollution inside Ulsan. And what they found was that even on a clear day, so even on a day that um, is shown on the pollution indicators as being in the green, even on those occasions you will find uh, particles in the air that are harmful to us. So technically even on a day as clear as it is today, I should be wearing a mask because there's crap in the air all the time, regardless of how good the air is. So that sucks. I haven't read the study myself, but uh, you know, presumably Richard knows what he read. And presumably Eunice did a good job of conducting the study, it wasn't. If anything, I would assume the university would be trying to portray the city in a positive light. Not to say, hey, even if you think it's clean, it's not clean. Victoria asked me another question, and the question was, um, well, she was curious to know what the differences were in, I guess, uh, in, for the kids growing up, growing up in South Korea versus, I guess, the USA or Canada, for that matter. Uh, and she was particularly asking, um, talk about aspects other than schooling. Clearly, schooling is very different between here, um, South Korea, and Canada, for example, kids study ridiculous amounts of times. As soon as they hit high school, their days are extended all the way till 10 p.m. And I assume that one of the reasons why this is done is to keep this, the kids off the streets. Kids that are stuck in schools for unreasonable purposes, like do your homework, which they never do. From my conversations with students, they tend to just hang out with their friends or sleep, catch up on some deer need disease during the study times. Um, 
So that is completely useless. And I know, I'm pretty sure that student uh, teachers are aware of, of the fact that kids uh, don't really use that time very effectively. Most of them, I think there may be a few students who are very keen on studying and maybe they do, but for the most part, uh, they don't. So <clears throat> the difference in upbringing is, I think, uh, and what I've seen, some of the comments that I've read on the internet from some other uh, dads living in Korea, um, and parents, there is no worry about gangs. Gang violence in Korea is virtually non-existent. Yes, there are some, but I think they're very uh, distributed pockets of, of random incidences that don't occur on a regular basis. So that's one thing less parents have to worry about, right? If you've got your kids running around, uh, if they're outside, there is very little to almost no gang-related activity. As such, there are no drugs. Korea is very st strict about drug law laws. The, for example, marijuana is considered on par with um, any hard drugs like cocaine and heroin. Uh, as a foreigner, if you get caught using it or even worse, um, selling it, it, it might not even be that far. You may just be associated by word with people that have been caught using it and you're, you're running the risk of being deported. The people who do use drugs or sell drugs in Korea are hardcore criminals. There are no petty dealers here. You'd be extremely stupid to be a petty dealer because the risks are just, you know, enormous. And the few bucks that you could make from selling weed would, would just be not worth the risk. So you'd have to be a hardcore uh, criminal, I think, to to engage in like drugs and stuff like that in South Korea. The weekends uh, in our neighborhood, there is a playground right next to my, my daughter's uh, school and it's just loaded with kids every weekend or every evening. There's tons and tons of kids. So I guess in that aspect, I don't know, back home, do kids still do that? Do they play outside? Almost every single elementary aged child in Korea has a smartphone of some sort. Uh, Samsung produces these ch children phones. They're about yay big and you can have them as a watch uh, or you can take off the band and just and hang one around your neck. Uh, so the kids run around with these little round smartwatches dangling around their necks. These smartwatches have an option. Uh, the, their functionality is very limited. They have access to some minimalistic form of the internet. They can call their parents, uh, they can call some of their friends, but they don't get to access any other internet options like, um, I don't know, Nave or Google or whatever. The second step up from that phone is this, uh, it's a bigger one, I don't know, like a Mickey Mouse thing they call it or something. Um, and it's got a bit more function functionality, you can access a dictionary, so I think that's aimed towards kids who are beginning to learn languages and such. Uh, but still, you don't get to access the internet fully. And then you've got the regular smartphones. But almost every single kid, uh, elementary and up, has a smartphone. Actually, the upbringing here is kind of... Um, I don't know, it's strange to compare it. Because I'd always think like kids are a lot more independent back home. I always thought that kids are a lot more independent in, in Canada by the time they reach university age. Uh, in Korea, many many university age students, or even past that, still live there with their parents. I've met people who are 30 odd years old, uh, they, they have a job, they have their own life, but they live with their parents. Because that's traditionally how traditionally things have been done in Korea and many people still do that to this day. But on the flip side of things, in Canada for example, if a 14 year old boy is left alone at home, that could put the parents in, serious, in some serious trouble. From what I heard, I've heard of people getting in trouble for having their 14 year old kid stay at home alone. Uh, the, the, uh, whatever, social security or social department would come in and, and they have the power to take the child away for parental negligence or whatever the heck they call it. Which is absolutely preposterous. So I don't know if this happens all across the board in the States and Canada, but I guess it happens enough to be mentioned. Whereas in Korea there is no such thing. Uh, it's purely to the discretion of the parent um, to determine whether their child is old enough to be at home by themselves or not. My kids, um, seven, I guess my daughter is eight, my son is six. They've stayed at home by themselves plenty of times. When we lived next to our Hagwan, um, 
Mali, Mali would finish school, she would go home, she would come back to the Hagwan, uh, she would go back home by herself, she would go pick up her brother and take him to school, uh, take him back home or take him to the Hagwan. Because everything was within walking distance, so crossing these streets, the streets where we live, uh, where our Hagwan is located, are not very busy and Mali had no problem walking around. Right now where we moved, we moved across the busy street, so the only um, concern that I have personally is her having to cross that busy street. And I think I trust her enough to be smart enough to to stop on a red light and, you know, but it's not really her paying attention, it's stupid assholes running red lights and that kind of stuff, that's what scares me. But knowing how independent she can be at her little age already, you know, I have no problem with leaving her at home. I mean, I prefer to be with her, uh, but I, I don't have a problem when she's alone. She knows not to touch the gas, she knows not to mess around, she will sit at home and read books or play with her toys or just, you know, watch TV. That's another point of differences in upbringing. I'm kind of hesitant about going inside the building because I parked like right here on the street, which is kind of blocking the entrance to the Office of Education because there's no other parking. I guess I could move the car right here on the sidewalk, which I don't know which is worse. Being parked on the street, kind of in the entrance or being parked on the sidewalk and blocking the sidewalk. These gardens on each side are nice. There's like grass and trees, but maybe, just maybe, it would be wise to get rid of that and expand the parking lot a little bit. Just maybe. When it comes to family relations, I think the dynamics here are very different as well. Mainly because most families have working fathers um, and oftentimes stay-at-home moms. Uh, so a lot of the kids don't actually get to see their dads very much. A lot of the fathers work in companies, so they'll leave early in the morning before the kids are up and then return back home late, in the, late at night by the time the kids are already sleeping. So most of the children spend time with, with their moms a lot, which probably influences the overall development of children here in some way. Uh, a lot of teachers found that uh, the kids a lot of the little kids are kind of can get pretty clingy, like they'll come and sit on your lap and stuff like that. And I, I get the feeling that uh, that they crave the attention of a of a male, you know, being present in their life, because they may not be getting a lot of their dad time, which is really sad. But uh, sometimes I, oftentimes I felt like um, uh, my teaching services were secondary to the need for like a masculine presence for the children. Oftentimes the dads that do work, if they're at home, they're still very mentally absent. They're not really engaged with the families. Um, I've been told that things are changing and overall I think because of the size of Korea, it's a very small country. Uh, people know each other. The culture here is of, you know, unity, so to speak. The language makes people refer to things as our things, our family, our home, our country. It's very patriotic driven and kids are bombarded with that nonsense early, early on. Anyway, I think that's gonna conclude this little update. So yeah, uh, the weekend's coming up. This video will be up for your pleasure of viewing tomorrow. Uh, there will be another weekend video. The weather is nice. Hopefully if it stays this way I'm gonna venture out and we'll try to get another nice one uh, adventurous for the weekend. And then as always remember to come back on Monday for our Monday podcast with David. Um, we're supposed to have a guest speaker this Monday which is super duper exciting. Nini is gonna come on and she's gonna talk about um, uh, Cambridge testing because that's what she does. So a little bit of a shill episode but uh, I'm sure there's gonna be lots of questions that will spring up and uh, yeah, we'll go from there. So these ladies just came out randomly from behind me here somewhere. So remember to leave a comment in the section below if you have any questions. Uh, make sure to subscribe as always and uh, hit that like button. Bing. I'll see you in the next one.